This is Math 142, and we are going to uh, take a peek at Section 5.2, and we're going to build the unit circle um, and talk about how it helps us find all sorts of uh, trig, trig identity, trig functions, sorry, values of them. So um, if you remember maybe back to um, geometry class that you took at one point in your life, you were probably introduced to Soka Toa, um, where we have something like sine of some angle, is opposite over hypotenuse, or um, cosine of some angle, ka, that's the ka part, right, is adjacent over hypotenuse. Well, what I want to do is I want to take this, um, this idea of a, of a triangle. We have some angle, some opposite side, some adjacent side, and hypotenuse. And I want to nest it in a coordinate system and this point right here is this is the origin is zero zero so our angle our rotation is always going to be like that so we have some some rotation some angle and um this hypotenuse here what i'm going to do is i'm just going to make it one and that's the unit part of the unit circle we're going to think about this whole thing being able to rotate all the way around it'll make a full circle and that's our unit. The unit means the radius is one. Well, if the radius is one on this, notice that makes the hypotenuse one. So the sine is just the opposite value. So this is the opposite here. And if the hypotenuse is one, this is just the adjacent. So this is the adjacent here, right? And that means that sine is opposite. So in this case, the sine of the angle will be the actual height of this triangle, and the cosine of this angle will be the width. So, okay, that's a piece for me. And notice that this point where this where this terminates, this terminating point, is is x y. And if you think about x y, graphing x y, like x is the width and y is the height, right? So this sine y, this sine theta, sorry, is the y value of this point, and this cos theta is the x part of that point. And notice, like in this system now, I'm actually getting, I can have, I can go further than 90 degrees, right? Like I can have this right here. So my triangle kind of looks like this, but then what happens is I start to get some negative values here, right? Like this x value will be negative, and this would be, positive. So now I'm going to start taking sine and cosine of angles that are bigger than 90 degrees and having it make sense outside of the whole idea of a, of a triangle. Um, and before I, I start to get any values on this as well, another thing I want to point out from this picture, I'm just going to lift this out of here, height is sine and width is cosine. That's really huge. So sine of theta is y, which is height. Cosine of theta in the system is x, which is width. Um, notice then, I could use Pythagorean theorem to say uh, the cosine squared plus the sine squared, right? a squared plus b squared equals c squared, one squared equals one. So there's what's called a, the Pythagorean identity, uh, cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one, which is kind of, uh, kind of cool. That's a great relationship. So for example, if I told you that a uh, sine of some angle, I'll just call it T, um, is, is two thirds, right? And this is in quadrant one. So remember, uh, this is quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. So both of my both my sine and my cosine are, are positive in quadrant one. And I said, well then what's the cosine value of t? Notice I'm not asking what the actual angle t is. I'm telling you its sine value, and I'm asking you to find its cosine value. We can well we can do that using this relationship. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. We're in quadrant one, so let's see, uh, cosine squared, well I don't know cosine, plus sine squared, but sine is two thirds equals one. So if I square two thirds, that's four ninths. Subtract four ninths from both sides. 
So 1 minus 4 ninths. 1 is 9 ninths. So that's 5 ninths. Square root that. Square root of 5 over 3. And I know the cosine value without even actually finding even the angle t because of this relationship. Now notice that was in quadrant 1. And the nice thing about being in quadrant 1 is uh, both sine and cosine are positive. Right, because it's going over and up. Now, what if I told you this this whole thing is all the same, but it was in quadrant two instead? Well, if it's over here in quadrant two, right, some t angle, my sine's still positive because it's going up, but my cosine would be negative. So all this would apply except cosine would be negative. It would be the same magnitude, right? Because I do all the same work. But when I square root, I get a plus or minus that. So cosine would be negative root 5. And uh, similarly, in quadrant 3, notice uh, if I have some angle that terminates in there, um, they're both negative, right? I'm going back and down both. So sine is negative, less than 0, and cosine is negative. And then if I end up in quadrant four, like this, uh, that's over but down. So cosine is positive, but sine is negative. Got all of those uh, tools. So let me, let me just think about another one like this. If I told you cosine of some angle is 7 25 and it terminates in quadrant four, and I ask you to find the sine value of that angle. Well, let's see. We're down here in quadrant four. So sine is going to be negative, right? Because sine is y, it goes down. And I can use that Pythagorean identify uh, that Pythagorean identity to get there. Cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. So let's see. Uh, 49 over 625 plus sine squared equals 1. So in order to sign, uh, solve for sine squared, I'm going to subtract this 49, uh, 625s from both sides. You can grab your calculator for that. Or you can say 1 is 625, 625s. Do that subtraction. Uh, 625 minus 49, uh, 576. And sine squared is equal to that. So if you square root that, I get 24 25ths. Sorry. So, and it's, since it's going down, it's in quadrant four, it's negative 24 25. So there's a way, if you know one of them, cosine or sine, and you know where it terminates, you can get the other one. Because sine and cosine are related to each other in this way. All right. So, here is uh, the next thing that I want to do. I want to start to actually build the unit circle. So here is unit circle right here. And um, before we start to build it, let me get the angles on here. So this is 0 degrees, which is the same as 2 pi. Uh, this is 90 degrees, which is the same as pi over 2 write the angles in here. This is 180, which is the same as pi. 270, which is the same as 3 pi over 2. And since this is the unit circle, I know that this distance is 1. So this point right here is the point um, 1, 0. This is the point 0, 1. This is the point negative 1, 0. This is the point uh, zero negative. Okay, so let's keep let's keep going from here, and we're going to talk about there's two different types of angles in here that we are going to use to talk about. You think about what this angle would be right here, and it's half a ninety, right? So forty five degrees, or half a pi over two, which is pi over four. And so notice, if this is 45 degrees, or pi over 4, pi over 2, 
this is another 45 degrees past the, the 90, which is 135. You could also say it's, this is pi over four, this is, right, this is pi over four. You go it again, this is two pi over four, which reduces to pi over two. You go it again, now it's three pi over four. If you keep going in that, in that um, relationship, uh, four pi over four, five pi over four, six pi over four. See how that's equivalent to three pi over two. Seven pi over four, eight pi over four, which is two pi. So we can kind of count those around in that way. I'm just getting all the angles on here right now. And uh, let's see, 180 plus 45, 225 plus 45 plus 45 more, 350. All right, and just so you know, um, this angle here, this angle right here is 30 degrees. So that's 30, 60, 90. So I'll get these on here. This is 30, 60, 90. 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330. All right. And now if I think of those in terms of radians as well, I have got, well, 30 degrees to 180. So 30 over 180. If I think about that fraction, 3 eighteenths is 1 6. That's a 6 of the way. So this is pi over 6. Then this next jump is 2 pi over 6. So it's pi over 3. Do that jump again. 3 pi over 6. Pi over 2. Do that jump again. 4 pi over 6. Which is 2 pi over 3. Do that jump again. 5 pi over 6. Do that jump again. 6 pi over 6, which is pi. 7 pi over 6. 8 pi over 6. 4 thirds. 4 pi over 3. 9 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6, which is 5 pi over 3. And 11 pi over 6. So notice now I've got all of these angles written in here. And their equivalent um, radians, in degrees and radians. Now this is going to end up being a lookup chart for me. Um, in other words, all of these are benchmark angles. All of these are angles that I should be able to know sine and cosine values of. And we're going to build them up a certain way. We're going to build them up the 45s first. So the first thing I'm going to start with is a triangle which is a 45, 45, 90. And I'm going to make this radius 1, I'm, that hypotenuse 1, because, again, that distance is 1. And notice what I could do is I could fit that triangle, 45, 45, 90, right in here. Yeah? So um, my question then is, how long are those sides that that must be 1? Well, we can get their Pythagorean theorem for this. Uh, 45 and 45, same angle, so those distances will be the same. So a squared plus a squared equals one. A little bit of algebra. Uh, two a squared is one. Divide by two. Square root both sides. This is one over the square root of two. And technically, um, it's kind of antiquated, but we usually don't use leave radicals in the denominator. So I'm going to multiply this by root two over root two. Root 2 times root 2 is 2. So it's root 2 over 2. So this distance is root 2 over 2. So whenever I have a 45 degree angle, um, I can fit that little triangle right in there. Notice right there, if I have that 45 degree angle, this distance is root 2 over 2, and this distance is root 2 over 2. This point right here is the point root 2 over 2, root 2 over 2, right? It's gone over root 2 over 2 and up root 2 over 2. So that's kind of helps me because now if I start thinking about things like sine of 45 degrees, 
which is the same as sine of pi over 4. Well, let me go back to what I was thinking about sine. Sine is height. Sine is the y value. Sine of the angle is y, or the height. Cosine of, of the angle is x, or the width. So that means that the sine is the height, how high this is, which is root 2 over 2. And if you were to grab your calculator and go sine of 45 degrees, you'll get a number that is equivalent to that root 2 over 2. So I know now from this <laughs> that uh, <clears throat> the sine and the cosine values of uh, 45 degrees, which is great. Um, and also actually helps me. Let me look at 135 degrees right here. So 135 degrees fits in there. But I want you to notice if I have 135 degrees right here, this angle that takes our angle back down to the x-axis, that's called a reference angle. And notice on this, if that's 180, this is 45 degrees. So we can fit that 45, 45, 90 in there, but now we have some directions. We're going back and up. So the x value is negative. So the x value is negative, negative root 2 over 2, and the y value is positive, root 2 over 2. So now we know sine and cosine values for 135. Again, sine is sine of 135 is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 135, or 3 pi over 4, is negative root 2 over 2. And if we start to throw these in here for these other ones that have that same reference angle, in other words, this angle right here, where that's 45, and this angle right here, where that's 45, we get those values as well. Um, it's the same magnitude, the root 2 over 2, but like in this case, when we're in quadrant 3, x is negative and y is negative. So we've got that direction associated with those. And with this one, x is positive, y is negative. So now we know um, sine and cosine values for all of these 315, 225, 135, 45. Again, I can just look it up. I can go, if I want sine of 7 pi over 4, Sine is the y value, right? It's the height here. So negative root 2 over 2. So that gave me a bunch of those. So now I've got these 30 60s to think about. And before I go into the whole triangle thing, like if you look at this angle right here, this 120 degree right here, hopefully you can see that this reference angle is 60 degrees from 120 down to 180. Or if I look at this, uh, 150 right here you can this angle that's right in here is 30 degrees so if I have um, a 30 60 90 triangle and this distance is one if I know those side lengths I've got all the rest of the angles on here taken care of and I know their sine and their cosine values exact values uh, just by knowing this chart so let's think about a 30, 60, 90, and then we'll get this filled in. Um, this is how I'm going to do this. I'm going to take an equilateral triangle where everything is 60 degrees. And I'll make everything one long. And then what I'm going to do is cut this in half right here. And so if I cut that in half, notice now this side length is cut in half. So this is a one half. And this is a 30 degree in here. So I know that, see how this is that. So opposite that 30 is 1 half. And now I can get this distance uh, taking advantage of that Pythagorean theorem again. I'll just call it A for now. I know that A squared plus B squared equals 1 squared. So that's A squared plus a fourth equals 1. Subtract 1 fourth from both sides. Square root that, square root of 3 over square root of 4 is 2. So square root of 3 over 2. So in this 30, 60, 90 triangle, anything that's, if this hypotenuse is 1, 
Anything that's opposite the 30 is a half, and anything that's opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. So if I think about this angle, uh, this triangle here, notice this is, this is 30 degrees in here. So the height is 1 half, and the width is root 3 over 2. Similarly, if I look at this triangle right here, this angle, this central angle is 60 degrees. So the height, what's opposite the 60 is root 3 over 2. And what's opposite the 30 is 1 half. So this would be yeah, root 3 over 2. And I can keep going around uh, the circle and getting that. And what's nice is there's all kinds of symmetry here. In other words, um, sorry. In other words, if I came straight across from the 60 to the 120 right here, like these magnitudes are the same. It's still going over a half and up root 3 over 2, but the 1 half is now in the negative direction on this triangle right here. So I'm going to get the rest of these um, written down. It's a really good exercise for you to try and uh, make the, the unit circle on your own. But I'll get the rest of these written on here. Again, symmetry across from here. Now, again, I got that symmetry across from here. Symmetry across from here, right? X is going to be negated because it's the opposite direction, left, right, but it's the same height, 1 half. And then I have symmetry this direction now, right? Like the X is the same from this point to this point. But now instead of going up a half, it's gone down a half. Symmetry this direction from this point to this point. The X is the same. The Y is now going down instead of up. And with these points, I can do my symmetry this direction, or I can do my symmetry this direction. Noticing that symmetry is pretty huge on this as well. So here's my unit circle. Again, it's a lookup table. And I'm going to argue that if you know this first quadrant, if you know this, which is pretty straightforward to make, if you reflect it over this way, you're just changing the x values. If you reflect it over this way, you're just negating those y values. And if you reflect it, then reflect it again, you're negating both the X and the Y values. So knowing just this uh, helps you know the whole thing. And the more you have this memorized, the better off you're going to be. Another thing to notice just in here, just look at the X values as the angle increases. As this angle increases, the width decreases, right? Like this is out here at 1. And then it's here at root 3 over 2, then it's root 2 over 2, then it's 1 half, then it's at 0. So notice this kind of counts down. Um, and if I think about this this way, um, 1 is root 4 over 2, root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2. 1 is root 1, root 1 over 2, root 0 over 2. See how it kind of counts down. Because, again, this is the width, this is the x value. So this width, and then this width, and then this width, and then this width. Like it's just getting smaller, 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 smaller. Uh, similarly, as we go up, the height increases all the way up. Right? It starts at a height of 0, then it's at a height of 1 half, then it's height of root 2 over 2. So hopefully if you start to think about kind of this dynamically, that that um, angle changing, you can see how the x values are changing, the y values changing, and they just kind of go through this board. Uh, and of course, there's angles between these, right? There's 35 degrees, which means uh, cosine of 30 degrees will be between root 2 over 2 and root 3 over 2. We don't know exactly what it is yet at this point in this course, but we can get there. Uh, again, sine of an angle on this is the y value or the height, and cosine of an angle is x, or the width. So if I were to ask you, what is sine of 240 degrees, or what is cosine of 7 pi over 4? Cosine of 5 pi over 6. You can give me exact an angles. Like You can just look it up. Sine of 240 degrees, 240 degrees. Sine is height. 
it's negative root 3 over 2, right? And that happens because I have this 30, 60, 90 right here. We're opposite the 60 degrees in an opposite, in a negative direction. Oops, I forgot to write the negative. <laughs> cosine is 7 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4 is here. Cosine is the x value, root 2 over 2. That happens because we have this 45, 45, 90 here, and the width is root 2 over 2. Cosine of 5 pi over 6, 5 pi over 6 is right here. This is a 30, 60, 90. Cosine is the x value, negative root 3 over 2. All right, so get familiar with the unit circle. Like I, uh, there's lots of ways to just, you, know, you can just Google blank unit circle. Try and build it on your own. That will really help. And think about the 30, 60, 90, the 45, 45, 90. Post any questions you have uh, in, the, in the forum or message me and give a try to those, uh, those problems that are practice. It is important to get that practice in.